Praise the Lord, and good evening. It's Wednesday evening, if you're able to keep track of what day of the week it is. This is Wednesday, and tonight is Bible study. We look to the Word, and we reach out to the Lord. And uh, glad you joined us this evening here on, our, on the website. And uh, we want to look into the Word of the Lord for a few moments and take some time to be together uh, by way of technology. And uh, I want us to start out with prayer and uh, ask God that he would uh, continue to, to be with us and to touch us and to protect us. And uh, for those in our church body that need healing and need a touch uh, physically or spiritually or any other way. <clears throat> so join with me as we pray. Father, we're thankful this evening for your great love to us. Lord, that we can reach to you and that you're not far from any one of us. You're right there. We don't have to be together at church, though that is a great time. We look forward to that time happening again in the near future. We know that tonight, with the things that have befallen where we're at today, that we're required to be here in this kind of a setting in our homes. But your presence is still here, and it's still in our homes, and it's still with us. And I uh, pray, God, that you will bring a touch to each one of those individuals who are listening here and those that are members of our church family, our friends and families. God, that you will keep them and protect them. God, that you will encourage them and bless them. I ask, God, that your touch be upon these next few moments as we speak about your word, talk about the promises that are found there and, and all the good things that you have given to the church and things that we can rely upon and look to in times of difficulty. I pray, God, your blessing and your peace, your peace that will pass all understanding. I thank you for it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <clears throat> well, a lot is going on, a lot is happening in our world, and, uh, and uh, we're trying to get our minds wrapped around it and try to understand exactly what this all really means to us, <clears throat> what the future holds, and of course, uh, everybody has a thought and an idea about it, um, but but God has everything in His hand and in His control, and I trust for that. And uh, and His Word brings that out. This is a this is a big week, you know. This is the the week where we talk about you know Jesus coming into Jerusalem. We talk about <clears throat> the uh, Last Supper, the foot washing. We talk about uh, the betrayal. We talk about Jesus going into the garden, and uh, all this happened in this one week span of time, and uh, him being in Pilate's judgment hall, Peter's failure, Judas's betrayal. Uh, we talk about <clears throat> the scourging and the and the pain and the stripes and the and the crown of thorns. We talk about all those things because in this one week span of time, so much happened according to the scriptures and the word of God. And of course, then we look to his death on the cross and the shedding of his blood. And um, <clears throat> even though we, we're not able to be together to sing those songs uh, in, the, in the service or in the congregation at the church building, I want you to feel all of those things still. I still want you to, to feel those and to know those and read those. R read those accounts in the, in the gospels about what I just spoke to you about, about the crucifixion, about him going to the cross and dying and shedding his blood and what his blood means to us. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that here this evening, but think about that. Just realize that. Don't feel like that you can't still uh, feel those things out in the Holy Ghost and in your spirit, even though you're at home with your family. Maybe in those moments of, of complete total seclusion away from everything else, Maybe you'll find even something more than what you would have found otherwise. I believe that. And uh, we talk about here this weekend, we're all looking forward to, to that, and, and that is uh, him going to the grave and then raising again on the third day. And uh, <clears throat> so many things happened in that seven, approximately seven day span of time. There was joy, there was worship, there was sadness, there were failures, there was disappointment, there was pain, there was bloodshed, there was death, there was graves, there was resurrection, there was joy, 
there was hope, there was redemption. I mean, all of those things, what a, what a spectrum of emotions and events that took place in that seven day period. And, uh, and all of those things happen and all of those speak to us in different ways and different levels of maybe about what's going on right now with us, but also just in our life in general that we, we go the whole gamut of things and the whole emotional realm that we are working in as humans but God understands that and God sees that. And we know that the end result, the, the finality of all this was a resurrection. And we're going to get to that. We're going to look to that. We're going to rejoice over that here in just a couple of days in a very special way with this being Easter weekend coming up. And uh, <clears throat> we wonder, well, is the church secluded? You know, is, is the church uh, going to have to just sit on our heels and just wait until we have a chance to, to get out and to speak. But I don't believe that this is the time for the church to be silent. I don't believe that this is the time for the church not to be engaged. Uh, this is, in fact, I personally believe it is a great opportunity. I think it is the time for the church to be the church. It is time for the church to realize her place in the world like never before. Because what the church can speak into the world is something that the government can't speak into the world and society can't speak into the world, and all of the programs and all of the things that are being enacted to help, which are all good, but I'm saying as far as the need of humanity and the soul, here's our chance for the church to be able to speak the truth and to talk about the things that really matter in life. And tonight, I'm gonna to tell you, in the realm of what we're looking at this week with Calvary and the blood, I think it's time for the church to tell the world that the blood of Jesus Christ is still the only thing that will save us, redeem us, heal us, deliver us, and the Bible speaks about it, and we have experienced it. So we need to tell it. Say, get on the phone, on the internet, texting, email. That's our, that's our way of getting those things out. But we can still share that and, and show the love of God and show the power of God and, and and uh, when you talk about the blood, and, uh, and I think, that, you know, for us, we realize the importance of that. In 1 Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 19, it talks about the blood of Jesus Christ. And it talks about that blood, and when it does, it speaks about the blood in such a beautiful way. And, and the apostle uh, gives it some, some understanding when he says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body. Now, if you can see Jesus Christ, the only perfect that ever lived in the world, there was not another human that was ever perfect. There was not another individual that was without sin, but Jesus Christ. And yet here he comes so close to those sins because the Bible says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. And, and the beauty of that is to realize that that blood, and the Bible speaks about it being precious, that the precious blood of Christ is the thing that we hold to because that's what saves us. That's what redeems us. And this week, as we see Calvary, as we see Jesus hanging on the cross, as we see all of those things, as we read about it and we we, we think about what that was and what that meant. I want you to realize that in that moment of time, the world would never be the same. If the world ever pivoted on a moment in time, it was on Calvary's hill, it was on Golgotha's hill. Whenever everything changed, everything changed. And uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that, that speak of change and we're seeing changes and we, I've talked to people inside the church and outside the church who have talked about the changes that we've all been experiencing. Some of them not very pleasant. <clears throat> some of them, excuse me, some of them uh, are, of course, I think we're seeing that maybe they're good and, and maybe positive changes. And uh, in this time of, of separation, I think we probably talked with each other more as families and, uh, and, and, and reached out to one another when we were usually so busy doing all the things we had to do in life, the change that takes place in Jesus Christ, but also in our situation sometimes is a change that is for the positive. 
talked about the firm foundation series that we had uh, through the beginning of the year, <clears throat> establishing uh, with the church body uh, a foundation. And then the weekend before, uh, having uh, the focus on a firm foundation in our marriage. And, and again, I just, you know, I think God ordains things to be and helps us and knows what is before us. And, uh, and so far, it seems like it's helped maybe our families. I don't think the husbands and wives are at each other's throats yet. So maybe that weekend was a positive thing. Maybe you can thank me for that later because maybe you survived this period of time and this close proximity because we've learned the importance of our marriage and uh, our relationships between husband and wives. So um, all of those things really matter. I'm going to read you something that was given to me, and then we'll talk just a little bit more about Scripture and the blood. But talking about change and that the blood changed everything, the power of the blood changed everything, because before that, there was no real redemption. There was no forgiveness of sins. And um, <clears throat> with all that happened in the Old Testament, it was the blood of Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. That was the whole focus of what would change during this week that we're in right now of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But <clears throat> listen to some of these things, and you can take some of it, and, and don't focus on everything specifically, but maybe the general feel for it. But talking about 40 days, and I appreciate it, I received this. Uh, by an email, but I thought it was very interesting, that there was 40 days that the flood or the rain fell upon the earth before it ceased. 40 years, the exodus lasted. They were 40 years. 40 days of fasting in the desert where Jesus was tempted. There were 40 days of appearance of Jesus after his resurrection. There were 40 days isolation or quarantine, if you will, that has been called in some areas right now. And uh, <clears throat> we've gone through about, we're going to be approaching that period of time. But the key there is that there's an isolation period. And the number 40 specifically in the Bible attracts a lot of attention because it's mentioned many times in the Old and the New Testament. But it's also an important number today amongst uh, a lot of different things. 40 days is what is recommended for a woman to rest after giving birth. It is 40 is the weeks of gestation, or the period of gestation period. Some theologians think that the number 40 represents change in the scriptures and is a preparation time of a person or people to give for fundamental change. It takes 40 days before these changes will take effect in your life. Will something happen in the 40 days that we have been experiencing? I hope, I pray. In the natural, maybe the rivers are a little cleaner. They're saying the vegetation is growing. Air is clean due to less pollution. Um, it's... It's a change in our world. There's less uh, crime, thefts, and murders. Now, it seems like maybe the entire world is a little bit at rest right now. Everything is taking a pause. And so it's hard for us because we're used to that rapid pace. But if we can see that in the course of this time period, just like the week between Jesus coming into Jerusalem and the resurrection, that week there was a, a, a turmoil and a swirl of things that happened and then I believe the entire world paused as the Christ, the Savior of the world, hung upon the cross and bled and died and then went to the grave. And, and, and it seemed so traumatic to go and swing from the moments of joy as his coming into the Jerusalem and, and then to see him go to the cross. And the same people that cried, Hosanna to the King, were now crying, crucify him. And the, this that swinging pendulum of that week was so difficult, and the change that would take place, though, was so dramatic, they couldn't realize it altogether in that week, but it was going to change the world. It would change the way the world operated, and so I think the, the entire world is a little bit at rest. We're, we're, we're pausing right now, and I believe we're taking stock of things in our life, and so I encourage you to take advantage of these days. Take advantage of them. Advantage in the scriptures. I've heard reports of people, they said, I'm reading my Bible more, and I'm praying more, and I'm, and I'm seeking God more, and I'm spending more time with my family, and I'm realizing what is important in life, and that I don't really need a lot of things that I thought I needed. This change could be a very positive and a blessing from God in the end. 
as far as we're concerned in our own lives and our walk with God's. So the word quarantine, what I read here, is is from an Italian phrase, and it means a period of 40 days, or a period of time. It's a pause. It's a regrouping and a refeeling, a rethinking and a change that takes place. And I want the church, I want the church to tell the world that the change that takes place as we focus on this week of the crucifixion and the resurrection, the change that takes place in your life can be so dynamic it can change everything about your focus and the way you're looking at your life and the world around you. In the book of uh, <clears throat> Hebrews, chapter number 9, the Apostle Paul talks about the blood and the power of the blood. He says, Almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission. You're talking about change. You're talking about positive change. When Jesus came into my life and his blood covered me, it gave me and afforded me so many things. First of all, remission of my sins, taking all of the ugliness and the sin of my life and taking it away and forgiving me for it. He went to the cross and that change that happened as he hung there and at the resurrection, that change that took place is a change that I want to tell the world about. It can change anybody that will come to him and accept that because the Bible says that without the shedding of blood is no remission of sins. And in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse 21, it said, For he hath made him to be sin for us, he who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He who knew no sin took the sin upon him to change the world, to change everything about society. And, and the world was going to be different than what it had ever been before, all because of Calvary, all because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And the amazing thing about what the blood did was he who knew no sin took sin upon him and became sin for us on the cross, took your sin, took my sin, hung upon the cross and bore that sin so that he could change our lives, so that we don't have to live a life underneath bondage and, and, and all of the horrible things that sin puts upon us, but we can live free in Jesus Christ. Tell that story, would you? Tell that story to your neighbor, to your family, to the people you come in contact with this week. Don't think that this is a lost week or that this Easter is a lost weekend because we can't put on our nice clothes and wear our fancy hats and come to church and and, and all the things that we're used to doing at Easter. Don't let that happen. Don't just write this year off as not being a chance for you to experience the changing power of the blood of Jesus Christ and what he'll do in your life and what he'll do in others' life. Because you see the blood that Jesus shed, every drop of that blood speaks to us of all of these good things to deliver us from the sins of this life. I thought it was amazing when I, when I heard this. And this is concerning the coronavirus and they're trying to uh, combat it and, and, and find a remedy for it and try to make a difference in, in treating people. And it looks like here in the last few days that there's a very good chance that one of the ways that they're gonna fight that, they're gonna fight the need in the life of others with the blood of those who have already had it. Those that have been afflicted with it those that have had experienced it, those that had it in their own body. And then they're going to take that blood and that blood is going to be the salvation of somebody else. I read the story and it's from John Hopkins and a man by the name of Cassid of all. He has been working with what is called a century old blood derived treatment for the use of slowing the spread of the disease. This man who is a Bloomberg Distinguished Professor of Molecular Biology and Immunology and Infectious Diseases at John, Hop John Hopkins, he published a paper speaking of this. He says, in this case, physicians would ask patients who recover from COVID-19 to donate their blood, donate their blood, from which Sarah would be isolated. And after processing the serum and removing other toxins, 
or trace illnesses, it can be injected into the sick patients and those at risk of contracting the disease. The equipment normally found in hospitals and blood banking facilities can perform this and recent advances made make it as safe as a blood transfusion. And I thought, you know, the remedy and the answer is still in the blood. The scripture was clear, and it was even stated all the way back in the Old Testament, that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And the change that can take place in the person who is hurting, wounded, and dying is found in the blood of another. Can we take that analogy and, and that thought and say, you know what? Today, I need redemption. I need salvation. I need deliverance. I need healing. I need strength. I need something that will change me. Change me. Change me, Lord. And in that moment, if we can reach our way back all the way to Calvary, all the way to the cross, all the way to Jesus Christ shedding his blood and know that our healing will come through his blood and the applying of that blood to our life. Today, I'm going to tell you that the only hope you have is in the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood shed on Calvary is the one element that will change you take away your sins, bring you peace, joy, healing, forgiveness, all of those is found in the blood. We love that song, we sing it, sing it years gone by many times as a young boy. What would wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What will make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the blood today. I'm thankful for the change that it makes in our lives and makes us a new creature and heals us from all of the iniquity and the sins of our life and delivers us. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I pray God that we all have an understanding and a focus and a vision. Help us to somehow today, as we move towards this weekend and the crucifixion and remembering the resurrection and all that has taken place in this period of time in the scriptures, let us see it, I pray, vividly and very clearly. I pray, God, that you'll show it to us and that, God, you'll help us to see and to know and understand that our only hope in this life is through your blood applied to our life. I ask God your touch upon each one. Bless them, heal them, strengthen them, work in our lives and our homes. And I thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' precious, precious name, amen. Amen. God bless you. And um, we'll be having uh, service uh, online this weekend uh, for Sunday morning, Easter Sunday. And uh, I do want to say as I close today that I, I appreciate all of the connections that are being made. You're making phone calls to other folks in the church and people that you know that are in need. Don't stop doing that. Keep reaching out. Keep showing the love of God. Uh, thank you for, for contacting us and for letting us know through emails and text and phone calls, you know, how you're doing and if there is any need, or there's anybody that, that we can help, we want to do that. We want to reach out. We want to help you, pray for you, offer you assistance in any way that we can, and pray that, that uh, God's blessings and touch be upon you. Thank you for your support of this church, and your support is great, and uh, you've supported it spiritually, in prayer, financially. Thank you so much for your contributions, and for all that you're doing to keep the kingdom of God active and flowing and God's blessings still moving in our community. God bless you, and I'll talk to you soon. Amen.